Good morning. We are live now. Uh, today is whatever December first, two thousand fifteen. That's what we got. Ah, today we have a session with Brooke. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, where do you go? You go to UK doing what? Uh, I'm going to Avalon. What is that? Avalon is the sacred place of one of the portals of the goddess. <laughs> right. So Brooke is accepting donations for the travel and for accommodations there. And how long does Brooke plan to spend there? Um, at least 13 days I'm going on a tour. Uh -huh. And then I'm not sure how many how much I'll be in the UK afterwards. So if there are any UK friends here, it'd be wonderful. So you're not to plan you're not planning to stay there? Oh no. It'll <laughs> at least um, two weeks, maybe four or five. And what's the purpose? Uh, to connect with my blood ancestry. I have English and uh -huh. Irish in me. And I also am carrying a lot of fairy, so uh -huh. I'm going to connect with many fey beings and people of my kind. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, is there like uh, an event, or are you just kind of by yourself? I'm going with a tour of priestesses. Priestesses. Yes. Wow. So uh, to donate, uh, announce your email. Uh, my email is my full name, brookalyssum, at gmail.com, and you can donate. Yeah, through <laughs> the humancolony.org, that is mm -hmm. a page. On the menu, just look for Brook, and mm -hmm. um, and then there is book, Brook's page, and there is a PayPal button, and there is PayPal link, so any way possible. And if you're confused, just email to brookalyssum and, uh, at gmail.com and... We'll figure it out. Mm. So donations are welcome and really would be used well. It would be used really well. And Brooke is offering the private sessions, and I had sessions with Brooke, and there you, know, you just speak to goddess, and they give you not all the answers, but the answers you need right now to move up. Yeah, to move up. Mm. So basically, okay. yes. May I ask a question? Brooke, uh, when you say Avalon, do you mean Glastonbury? Yes. Yes. Well, fortunately, I live about um, 20 minutes' drive away from there. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I knew someone did. <laughs> Who is this speaking? I'm Rowie. Rowie. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, we have to connect and um, make, make something happen. So. I've got lots Lovely. of contacts in the area, so I can find something for you. Lovely. So, Thank wonderful. You. Yeah, it works. It works. The new humanity is, is uniting. Networking is not. And on uh, Friday, uh, Brian is coming. Hey, Brian. Brian is coming, and uh, likely Wendy will come to my place, and we'll physically unite. We'll do Reiki. We'll go to the place where Brooke will do the sessions. How do you call it? Uh, Satnam Yoga, a wonderful spiritual place. So I think we'll do interviews there. That's my current idea, to do some interview because this place is just amazing. So we, we, I want to show it to, to you guys. So we'll do recorded interviews, and then we'll just post the interviews there. And on Saturday, we'll do the webinar. I think after the Saturday webinar, we'll do our own, or instead, we'll, we didn't decide yet. So it will be either 10 or around noon time on Saturday. So we'll do a lot of networking these days. Oh. And we can talk more about that, but I think we want to start now this session and their webinar. And the idea of today is the future of religion and the future of economy. Let's not dwell on the past. Let's dwell on the future how we improve, solve, transform. So that's the first question would be. And I will go also into partly channeling state. So I'll be asking questions and answering questions. Like I will be a multiple me in the same voice 
or in the same body. And uh, the first question would be how there is uh, how do you talk to people? There are there are people who are who are very religious and don't want to hear about anything else. There are atheists who suspect there is something else. And there are light workers who are so against religion, they just don't connect spirituality to religion at all. It's like religion for them is anti-spiritual. And I guess we'll talk more about Western religion, whatever it is. Um, before we go into the questions, let's do the blessings first. Anybody wants to start with a blessing? So I'll start and Brooke, you may continue. Anybody else? I would just like to say, hi, this is Wendy. Hello, Brooke. Hi, Max. Thanks for being here today. I'm, hi, I wasn't Wendy. able to be there. I wasn't able to be there today with you, but I am here with you from here. <laughs> Yes, I just want to bless everyone for being here today in this beautiful goddess energy, here with the spirit of Gaia and all that is, and the idea of oneness. Anikato yoko asina, alakora asina. Namaste. 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 We thank the spirits who are always with us. We thank the spirit which is always the, with us. We thank the source which is us, which resonates with us and brings us the bliss and the blessing of love. Can I continue? Blessings, beloveds. Mm. Breathing into this beautiful Tuesday, the month of December, winter solstice upon us. Being grateful for all the plentiful, bountiful gifts of light, happiness, joy, in immense gratitude for all that is Satnam. So here is the question. How to speak to other people and what to intend and what is the future? Clarity in how to speak to other people to believers, religious believers, to atheist believers, and to light worker believers, how to bring them to the light, or whether to bring them to the light. Very good question. There seems to be, yes. <laughs> wisdom here wisdom for light workers if that is what we identify with wisdom for peacekeepers soul workers spiritual guides Our greatest task is to be what we are. It is not so much in pronunciation, not so much in anticipation of bringing others to the light, But it's a daily choice of wisdom the daily choice of living a virtuous life waking up 
with virtuosity. Showering with virtuosity. Meditating with virtuosity. It is stepping in more and more to a virtuous life that we engage the light within and without. The light is there for all, even if they are not aware of it. There is the sun, and we are all aware of the sun. And in that sense, we are also aware of the sun. In Abrahamic Christian religions, the Son of God, Jesus, Yeshua. And this light being has filled our collective consciousness has filled our ancestry, the greatest story ever told, as some say. This light being is with us already. Our first example of virtuosity, some of us at least, in terms of religion, theology, spiritual people, particularly the Western world. But the stories of Jesus transgress the world, transgress the earth as the example. Yes, many interpretations of his word happened, and it was in this interpretation that we lost his embodiment, his virtuous living. So take note of this incongruency of interpretation versus absolute embodiment. Because when we call on other light beings, such as Jesus or Buddha, any of the ascended masters, we call on their essence, their virtuosity. We do not call on their stories, though we are quite aware of them holding an archetypal imprint, an archetypal resonance. It's a dance, acknowledging the story that has meaning. All stories have meaning. But also acknowledging the many interpretations of one's essence. And that is medicine for us to understand others as well. We may feel, sense, think, interpret that they are not with the light, that they are not conscious of the light, that their actions are incongruent but they have their own story to the light. And we must honor that. We must not misinterpret others. This is a way to grace. Utmost trust in the goddess, the unfoldment of the plan, 
We must trust ourselves in order to trust others. We must trust ourselves in order to trust any ascended masters, any light beings, any religious philosophy, spiritualism, Eastern meditation, all information, all stories, that our story is ours. That is our greatest learning of the light, is in our own story. The surrender to our own story, letting us surrender to the billions of Gaik, galactic, multidimensional inferences that are just simply stories. Any other questions? I will take it from here. Um, surrender to the mystery and smile. Really, you cannot take it, you cannot grasp it without smiling. Only the smile allows you to shift dimension. Only the smile is the way to ascend. <laughs> Only the smile is the way to ascend. Understand it is a collective dream. Keep in mind, the life, the reality is a collective dream. And it is governed in part by the planets and astrology and ages. What was the religion of the past? Was in the past created by the spirit and individual humans and consciousnesses. It carries the archetypes of control, domination, subordinates, subordinates, trust, mistrust. So many stories are there which are dark of wars and death and injustice. You define your reality. It's up to you what to take with you, what to resonate with, what to take in the future, and to which future do you want to shift. It's up to you to which future do you want to shift. Yes, I invite more questions. Any questions, any topic. And if you like to form a line in your chat box, that would be nice. If there are any questions outside, please help me bring a, a voice in them out. Is this like a... Um all goddess energy or is there a specific goddess? Is it goddess energy or what? Or a specific goddess, like, you know, you have Kuan Yin, you have many goddesses. Or yeah. is it a collective? Uh-huh, and who is speaking? It's Alu. It's Sarah. <laughs> oh, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello there. The goddess is one and many. I have a question for the goddess. Please. Why did you choose Brooke? <laughs> I await. To remember. Water. 
one of the most important ways for us to receive a transmission is during experiences with water, sacred bathing, anything that we take in with H2O is the pure, pure essence of the goddess and a pure, pure foundational. Nothing compares to water. So the highest vibration on Gaia because the energy is still unclear of what is able to contain, what water contains, what sort of energy is inside of the molecules, what sort of energy attracts to water. In multidimensionality, water will play and does play a huge part in remembrance of our sensitivities and also greater contact with our galactic beings outside of Gaia. Then on that note, which I definitely agree with and I think everyone does here how important water is, what food source, from your understanding, would be a good choice, whether for detox or general consumption, to go with a very watery diet? A general water-based diet is what I'm hearing. What is the best? The best physical food source which Earth has to give. Ah, mmm. Greens. Our leafy greens. Simply because they contain so much chlorophyll, so much water. And that they're. An example would be kale. Kale, collards, even weeds, greens of all sorts contain the most, as we <laughs> understand them, basic sort of taste, but it's so, so rich, especially with water flowing next to gardens with plenty of greens. Even if it's just water flowing, we can think of creeks, streams, rivers, but also just a fountain, an intentional place where water and leafy greens reside together. That is pure, pure essence of two things that lots of us would be able to survive on. Not all of us. Some can survive with little. Some can just survive on water. Some can survive only on water, lee, dark leafy greens, and more. But most of us can survive on water and greens. Thank you for that, Goddess. Thank you. Hello, I have another question. This is Sarah again. I just finished a tour uh, toning to the waters in northern European area. Mm. And I'm wondering what effect did that have on the planet? Mm. I'm seeing a picture. I'm seeing a watercolor. Uh, a painting of watercolors. The, we're, we're all quite familiar with water paints. And I'm seeing that 
there was water spilt on the paints, so it's bleeding. What you did with your tuning is bleeding this water vibration into colors that are open to receiving more of this fluidity, transmission, and intentional water healing that you did. It washes, water washes, cleanses us, rebirths us. It's an incubator for life. We were born in water. We were born in the womb. So yes, I'm getting that, what you did, my dear, inspired a lot of cleansing. The water is a transdimensional portal. It um, connects this reality to the next level and to many next levels. You contain water and this is your antenna to the other dimensions. DNA structures water, protein structure water. Whatever we eat structures the water and the water becomes an antenna and the portal to the other dimensions. By tuning into different frequencies you structure the water, your intention structures the water within you and outside you and that is the path to connecting to other dimensions, to the spirit world, to other levels. You define your reality and the water is a wonderful permission slip and it is a tool a, medium for reconnection. Bless it and be blessed with it. I have a question. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, yes. Thank you. Was it Robbie? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It is. Thank you for having me here today. And greetings to the goddess. I have a question about the manifestation of your energy upon the planet Earth. Where would be a good example, or what would be a good example of the manifestation of your energy upon this planet? She loves this question. Everywhere. But if there's difficulty in seeing the goddess in everywhere, look to the mountains. The mountains naturally okay. shaped like women's breasts for a reason, clearly. Mm-hmm. Most connection with deep into the Gaia, deep into Mother Earth happens during heightened ceremonies within, on top of mountains, and also connection to star beings. They know where to look. The mountains carry so much, if not all, of the goddess energy, the mother energy. Beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Brooke was talking about Avalon earlier. Um, Hold on a second. You care to Before you switch to the next topic, area? Before you switch to the next topic, can I continue on that topic? Can you hear? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, 
the shape of the onion, the shape of the mountain, the woman's breast is another shape for a vortex, for a portal, for a chakra, for a chakra. Woman's body has two additional chakras of the breast which are healing and powerful. And uh, you can notice them in churches, the domes of the churches, especially the Indian ones and the Russian ones and the Muslim ones. And you can also notice them in design everywhere, in lamps, their vortices, which are mm, carrying and uh, carrying, creating the the portals that create the vortexes and they can be used appropriately. Same with pyramid, but pyramid has additional planes. Spherical ones, round ones have a different function. So hmm, be aware and connect in a positive way to that shape. It's a permission slip which is very powerful. Go ahead. Um, I was curious of the Avalon adventure. Mm. Uh, what does the uh, symbolism of Avalon mean to the goddess? Mm. It's one of her most cherished places of connecting, her most cherished places of teaching, her most cherished places of the thin veils of intentional communication with her. One of the most sacred sites that still is honored for the goddess to come through, for us to communicate with her. And also to begin to share our stories. Going back to the first question she's saying, we can sing, we can share, we can exchange our hearts of the goddess. connecting to her greater heart. It's all love, essentially. But it's one of the sacred sites that the goddess is still honored. Not just nature, but intentional portal, an intentional place. The rarity in that attracts many of us to come home. I'm going home. So yes, an internal home for all of us. Particularly those connected with the stories of Celtic lore, Celtic mythos, Celtic soul, truly. Hello. I was just about to ask that. What is the connection of Avalon to Ireland? Mm. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> Sisters. It's a sisterhood. Simply the proximity, the openness. I see this purple aura around both, not just one, 
I'm seeing this dark royal purple aura. They're divided by water for a reason. That division is quite intentional for journeying, clearly. but journeying on water as well. So I'm getting that water is the best place to get to Avalon, to, to Ireland. <laughs> In the sisterhood, hmm. Yes, it's quite, quite family. Mm. Orange. It's quite family in the sense of the lower chakras are awakened with each other. Hmm. Getting something about. The orange, mm, our sexual chakra, where our kundalini is, it's transparent in the sisterhood, which is rare. And it's talked about. <laughs> there seems to be more freedom with two, not just one. Did I reach one of those points where Ireland connects to Avalon in a portal, or did I mean, actually, tell me, I've reached a couple of them. Okay. <laughs> um, but was there any point specifically, any quarter point that was reached between Ireland and Avalon while I was there? Mm -hmm. I'm getting that you've reached something in the air. So. Were you dancing at all? Not as much, no. Okay, I'm seeing your arm uh, not reaching up to the sky, but reaching across the air around you. So I'm getting that you definitely went through the veils, but also that there is a Hmm. Let me see this illustration. I'm getting that you reach a crown chakra in the air. So reaching this essence mm. that's not <laughs> she's saying that it's quite unique to access the seventh chakra in the air in the sense because you were on the Gaik plane you weren't connecting with so much planets, the sun, it was very much the air molecules, the air spirits, communication. I'm feeling as if you got direct communication from not only goddess, but greater creator energy. 
What is resonating with you? Um, I do seem to remember that I saw the ground from the airplane, but with my third eye, and I could see it very vividly while inside the plane. Mm. The ground with your third eye, you said? Yes, I could see like a whole spanse of land mm -hmm. with my third eye when I first arrived to Ireland. I'm getting that there is already this um, you already had a portal open in the sense of your connection and the vibe uh, the <laughs> This is where goddess wishes I could just paint for you all. The um, like, imagine uh, a yoni, a vagina, please. This is what the goddess is saying, but crystalline white. So it looks like an almond. There we go, an almond. This almond energetic that you had. This curvaceous onto the Gaic earth, onto this green, curving through the air, this curvaceous line of energy, connecting and then sending information up to you. I'm getting that there is this, this almond sort of crown chakra that you opened with this connection that slipped through the earth. Air, air, earth. That's what I'm seeing. Thank you for that. I was wondering about that. <laughs> mm. Who's next? Hello, beautiful goddess. This is Wendy. Mm. I feel such a deep connection to both of you. And I recently discovered that a mutual friend found me through you. Um, I was wondering if you could mention for a moment, I too received, have been receiving multiple messages about my visiting the energy portals of the planet. I'm very connected to Gaia, share a very special language. And I'm wondering if you might be able to comment on this idea that I received very, very strongly yesterday about visiting these places all over the planet with the idea of also opening additional portals, which mm -hmm. also happens to be part of part of one of my names um, here on Earth. The name Portal is part of one of my names. Um, and the idea also that I am also Irish, uh, not, not, ex not um, c including uh, English and Irish as well. So I feel a very high connection to Ireland, ERA, and England as well. Mm. Well, my dear, <laughs> the numbers four and seven came up. <laughs> yes, that resonates with me. How so? Well, well, immediately I see 11 because 11 is my number. It's also my master vibration number. My birth date is an 11. Um, 11, I, I just vibrate very highly with the number 11. Um, so 4 and 7 I always see a lot um, as 11. Mm. Um, also see it singularly as well, each individual vibration of each number as well. Mm. I'm definitely feeling 
that the green, the mountainous portals for you, Wendy, before you mentioned your Irish background, I was sensing to connect with Mount Shasta in Northern California. Yes, I've received that message as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also, I'm sensing Alaska as well. The North. Yes. The Northern Portals is what I'm sensing. And to start with four, four Northern Portals. Ah, yeah. that makes sense. Tr truly, yes, Avalon and even going up to northern Scotland, that portal is open for you as well. I wasn't aware of that one. Interesting. Thank you. I received a message yesterday, a telepathic message about Scotland, and I wasn't sure what it was relating to. So thank you for connecting that dot for me. Findorn is up there for a reason. Are you familiar with that community? No, I'm not. Would you repeat the name, please? Findhorn, F-I-N-D-H-O-R-N, I believe. I believe okay. That's Thank it, you. Please tell me more. Yeah, it's an alternative community, uh, one of the first um, eco esso villages of its kind that's been around, I believe, since the 70s. Uh, very large, very intentional, very spiritual um, very beautiful community, right by the water, right in northern Scotland. There's a huge portal right there, too. Any other questions? Uh, hello. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. I remember your voice. What is your name? Oh, my name's Steven. Steven. Yes. Go ahead, my dear. Um, I was just going to ask about a dream I had last night. Um, about I, I usually have these reoccurring dreams. I'm in a room and uh, in a monitor, a TV screen type thing. I'm interacting with it. But at the very end of this dream, I remember very clearly that I was in this small room and there's these two ladies, uh, fairly young. One was sitting to my right and the other one was sitting across from me. And, uh, and then I just all of a sudden appeared there and we started talking. And then we started talking about some lady that was outside that was wobbling, that was like kind of, uh, kind of wobbling already. And she kind of hit me uh, on my arm on my uh, very... Uh, remember the contact of physical contact on my right arm when she hit me. It's like, oh, she's wobbling and she's moving her left and right. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was, uh, I said she was on some pills is what I said. She might be on some pills. That's what I said. And I, and I didn't know. And then, uh, and then I, I was, wasn't too comfortable. I just wrapped my arm around her. Like, is this fine? I kind of asked the other guys, like, I'm not doing it. I just, I just, you know, I get more comfortable. And, uh, and I talked to the other ladies, is that fine? I mean, I'm, I'm, I respect you. I'm a loving being. I just wonder if you had any more information. Thank you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. You're definitely being called by the goddess. This is definitely an introduction, and, it's, and especially... Initi initiation <laughs> with caring for yourself, holding yourself accountable to the goddess, holding yourself accountable in your own divine feminine, in your own divine masculine energies.
to initiate a caring container, a loving container, a secure container, a protective container, all things that you carry quite well, Stephen. I see this as an initiation phase. For you to work with your... Hmm. Your grasp on these concepts. Of what the Divine Feminine is to you, what it creates in your world, and what it is just objectively observing femininity. just objectively observing like these women in your dreams a chance to objectively observe femininity hmm. and participate as you did with kindness, consideration The Divine Feminine wants you to come home. And uh, those, just consider the possibility that those ladies were part of you too, or you were part of them. This, they were you or some aspect of you as well. All right, thank you, Max. Uh, I had a similar dream to that too uh, about another lady that I was on the lake and in, uh, in the, on a boat, and there's like a yellow raft on the back of the boat, like a little yellow square raft on the back, and uh, laid on top of it. And so, for some reason, I had to have permission uh, to uh, use this raft. And so another boat uh, that had a couple people in it came up to it and released that little like a, it's like a like a little raft of wavy yellow, uh, like almost like a blanket. And so I floated off to the side of the of the shore, and there's another lady who was there. And I started talking with this uh, lady, and uh, we, we talked and talked, and then I kissed her, and then uh, and then that's all I really remember. That's about, I very clearly remember that yellow raft on the back of the boat uh, that they, re they had to release me or something. I just sat there with the water until they released me, and I just zoomed. Uh, uh, over to the shore. That was a pretty cool dream. Mm. I'm getting that this also is a third eye awakening and that you're connecting more with your sight, your inner teacher, your inner wisdom through these dreams as well. And that especially if you're dreaming on water <laughs> There's a lot to be said for that. And a lot to be felt, more importantly. Feeling into how water carries you in your life. Feeling into how the feminine carries you in your life. How you are nourished by your own femininity Again, we all have our own femininity and our own masculinity. So observing how you're being nourished in your own femininity and how others are nourishing you by their femininity. It's this activation of the third eye that especially as awakened souls, when the goddess is activated, we're coming back home. We're not going into the ethers. 
though the goddess is also in the astral space. But in terms of ascension, when our third eye awakens to the goddess, we drop back in. We ground back in to our nurturing soul, to our nurturing bodies. And the wisdom of plant life as well. I'm getting a lot of plants, a lot of greens, participating in this last dream that you had, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Taking note that their femininity is also something to observe and to witness all the time. Yes, thank you. Go do. Blessing. Blessing. I have a question for the goddess. This is Michelle. Please. Hi. Hi. So I find that um, I find myself very uncomfortable um, currently, and. So I wanted to ask the goddess what the goddess has to say about two things. One, the um, idea of men objectifying women without being invited to do so. Mm. And the second, I would like to know the goddess's opinion on the spiritual vibration or pornography. Mm. Mm. Well, the first question of objectifying women, there's a lot of energetics around this, especially for goddesses in form those who connect with their femininity in their body and, ha and express themselves in feminine nature. The simple experience of existing can be objectifying. It is objectifying. Most goddesses in form have been objectified because the goddess herself has been objectified. For thousands of years, she has been forgotten, misplaced, and objectified. How do we know this? The lack of freedom, women's rights, the lack of freedom, equal pay, the lack of freedom, not being able to wear clothing that reveals without being objectified. This is all war against the goddess. And every time a woman is objectified, there are energetics that, that we experience. The goddess is saying, yes, of course, <laughs> Brooke has experiences tremendously. And all other women. The objectification comes from misunderstanding of the goddess, comes from misunderstanding of the feminine. And because of this misunderstanding, many of us instantly knee-jerk, react, compensate. 
Oh, you looking good. Sounds, dictions, expressions, catcalling. Verbal accusation. that suffocates a woman is an imbalance of the goddess in our hearts and in the world. She's been suffocated and as a result like taking a balloon that's been filled with helium squeezing it to let the helium come out. That is how people are trying to express their acknowledgement of the goddess. And it comes out in objectification because I have no idea how else to express it. No idea. There are no other examples of reverence, sacredness. We are not educated on femininity, the goddess. This is a huge, huge part of the ascension, part of our own ascension in education, educating others. What that feels, first of all, our personal experiences, what that feels to be misunderstood as a woman, as a goddess, and how it feels as a cosmos, as a collective consciousness, to be misunderstood. Because that is essentially what we're dealing with. But yes, there are ways we can educate others in certain time spaces. There are other ways where the goddess is simply asking us to interpret information of being objectified, asking us to see it with a different perspective. Of course, if it is right, stand up for yourself. But if it's not in that right timing, then take it as information to shift. Misogyny, objectification, slut shaming, if you've heard this expression. All of these are opportunities for us to shift. And we do that with education, and we do that with our divine counterparts, especially divine counterparts who embody the masculine. Speaking our truth, that that is not okay, and this is why. This is the greater reason why. My individual experience is an example of the larger experience. Always. In your second question, remind me what that is again. Kind of where the uh, the vibrational nature of um, pornography. Mm. I find that this younger generation. Um, has such free access to it that a lot of, um, to me, in, in my very limited exposure to, um, men have certain ideas that they've learned from movies, pornography, that, <laughs> um, I'll give you an example. I asked a friend why he thought a woman might like a certain thing, and then I, it dawned on me he saw this in a movie. And, um, and I thought that is such a low vibrational thing to me that you would kind of base how an interaction, a love interaction would look based on something created. And that feels very low vibrational to me, but I don't know if I'm, if that's just me or, so I would like your opinion on that. If it's low vibrational, yes, what was the last piece? I just wanted to know your perspective on it. 
Mm. If it's low vibrational, it's low vibrational. Period. It doesn't matter if it's just your opinion. You sense it. You interpret it as low vibration. Therefore, it is. Period. We have to begin to trust ourselves and our sensing, feeling, and communicating. And if something stirs, if something is, ugh, you know what that is? I know exactly what that is. That is the lower vibrational reality. And there is an energetic exchange via this human body, this person of masculinity or femininity, it does not matter. A lot of women are tuned into lower vibrational experiences because they are brainwashed as well by the media. It's all mind control, we know that. But having the opportunity to be the goddess that you are, Michelle, and to be present with men and to say, that's not how I feel it to be, that's not how I see it to be, but here I am in my goddess aura, my energy, saying that I am divine. I am the divine feminine. And that is not okay. And here is my, if you choose to disclose more information as a counter argument, sure, go ahead. Here's what I see as something of deeper spiritual connection, appropriation, that is appropriate. <laughs> ah. yeah. I find people don't, or I should say, um, people don't like to be told that they're being inappropriate or maybe can't understand. Well, my dear, you don't need those people in your life, period. If they're not receiving any of the blessed information that you have to share with them, they don't deserve to know you. They don't deserve to be in your life. Naysayers be gone. Those who are open, invoke. Those who see differently, who have different per perspectives, who are open to different perspectives, bring them on in. Those are who we need. Those who can shift perspectives without our convincing. Because convincing gets us nowhere. It's when people are ready to have conscious communication, conscious dialogue, then we can begin. Otherwise, let them be on their own journey. Let them be on their own soul path because it's about honoring their own soul path as well. Even if they are objectifying women, even if they are doing horrendous things, respect, always. Respect where they are. And if they are not matching your vibration, bless them and move on. Thank you, Goddess. Well, let me just share a few, <clears throat> or not to share, to diffuse a few lines about pornography. Just see the borders, try to define things, and try to identify what is not pornography in modern world. Like one of the worst uh, forms of pornography is the news broadcast, the news, uh, political news, violence. Seems to be exactly of the same vibration, even worse. Uh, very purified, very purified, very simplified, picking from the reality only the worst, only the physically most disturbing, only mentally most disturbing. The movies of the present are also very much in resonance with pornography. Many of them, especially the ones which are popular. Not all of them, but many of them. Or now even the good movie has to cater to the public which is eager for action. So the movie which caters positive message has to have some sort of violence in it just by to be to be to reach the masses. 
because the masses are blunted, the blunted, the deception blunts the sensations. The deception blunts the senses. So the overwhelmed people cannot hear, cannot comprehend things unless they are pronounced with screaming energy, with screaming low vibe message. Nowadays, latest months, there is commercial ads, how do you say, the posters, which show screaming people. That is something new, but that is just to get over the marketing trick to get over the blunted senses of people. So one way to deal with it is first to explore it, accept it. You can't change it until you accept it, until you explore it. But as soon as you tasted it, now work on your senses and filter things in a way that your senses will be optimal, adjusted, calibrated, calibrate your senses. Yes. Be very cautious what you watch and how much your senses are blunted by whatever screaming media gets into you. So filtering is great. So that's why YouTube is so wonderful that you can stop at any moment and scroll forward at any moment and skip at any moment. So replace your television with YouTube or streaming other services. May I ask yeah. a question? Yes. What would be better to watch? Would it be better to watch innocent people die in love on the TV or on your streaming or on your internet? And are not some of the actresses that perform in these pornographic movies some of the most liberated, some of the most fearless, some of the most bravest women we have? And how does the goddess feel about these actresses? Beautiful question. Oh, beautiful. She is filled with joy that you asked this question. Blessed be. Yes, she is taking care of these warriors, these rogue women who are participating in the conundrum of culture right now. This consciousness that is desiring to be seeped through in every aspect of society, but also there's still being great control where a lot of this information is coming. So these rogue women, these goddesses, are doing the work of pornography. And they're bearing it in their own ways. Some bear it with no complaints. Some bear it doing it with slight questioning. Why am I doing this? They don't know yet. It's a huge plan of the goddess. It always is for all of our lives, but particularly in sexuality, a vibration that is very confused right now in all our lives, for the most part. We're talking the collective consciousness here. These women are saintly women, truly. They're Magdalens. And they're doing the work, and we must respect that. And we must respect that they're doing it in a controlled way that's not of their own. Heart is what's coming through. And they might be aware of this, and they might not be aware of this. But we are aware of this, and the goddess is aware of it. So again, an opportunity to respect, an opportunity to also revere in the sacredity of all our lives, even if that's acknowledging 
pornography in a sacred way. Yeah, that feels uncomfortable for most of us. But all, if we use the law of spirituality, the law that everything is sacred, pornography is sacred. Of course, there's some that is not, and we get that. We get that some pornography is not sacred. It's not at all. It's violent, it's disrespectful, it's harmful. All of that. We get that. But at some element, there's a vibration of sacredness of it. And we have to trust, again, that this is part of our greater conscious awakening to all of these constructs, these contradictions of femininity being objectified, women not loving themselves, A lot of women do love themselves, and a lot of them do not know how. And we have to respect that in our lives and in any media portrayal of the goddess, of the Magdalene in action as well. Beautiful, beautiful question. We could go into it further, of course. I wanted to, on the same topic, just to bring the idea of alternative culture, alternative movies, alternative music, literature, which is very delicate, very, yeah, I guess the, the, the essence of it would be The Little Prince by Exupery. Can you translate to English? Uh, Le Petit Prince? Yeah. <laughs> French. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that would be the essence, and um, there is a lot of that is still intact and developing in French culture and French cinematography, in Italian culture, European culture. It's present even in, in here in Canadian U.S. culture anywhere. And nowadays, when their uh, movies become more available through different sites, just dig for it, find find it. Uh, there is still that culture developing, it, and it is amazing how they can avoid, like Coffee and Cigarettes is a great movie, avoid violence, avoid blunting your senses, overwhelming your senses, while still delivering intense, immense, deep, profound messages through whisper, gentle voice, and they can, even, they can even allow silence to be meaningful in these movies, songs, French songs of 70s, Italian songs of 70s and 80s. They still can do that even now. They, they can read poetry and speak in normal human voices, which is un unthinkable because everybody is now copying whatever they watch on, on the big screen, I guess, how it's called, on, and listen on radio. So that is still existing, so tune into that. And actually, we are here too, I guess, talking quiet voices and whispering here and there. Can I just add something to that, please? Oh, thank you. Um, my daughter is an artist. This is Valerie. And my daughter is an artist, and um, her favorite thing to paint is the nude women. And she just uh, loves well she's very proud of being a woman to start with and she loves every part of women and so a lot of her friends will pose for her because what she does is so it's a little abstract a little like Picasso's paintings but um, it ends up so beautiful and one of the things that really irritates her is when people tell her that it's porn, porn because to her it's not porn it's a beautiful woman and uh, so, yeah, she's uh, very, very proud of, of the goddess in her and in the, the goddess in every woman. And um, so I thank you for all of that you had to say today. Beautiful. Beautiful illustration. Thank you, Valerie. I mean, wonderful. Thank you for that. <laughs> so beauty will save the world. Beauty is the answer. Mm. <laughs> uh, 
Can I go on the same theme? But um, um, then what, in that sense, to you, goddess, is like an attractive male aspect, or what would you see that the human male should on the surf should be now focusing on, or maybe we can slowly start teaching him? It's teaching. It's not necessarily teaching, it's unlearning. It's unlearning it, to a degree that is of deepest intimacy. Because when we talk about the divine feminine, we're talking about deep, deep intimacy. Things that a lot of people don't want to deal with. That a lot of marriages, relationships, partnerships, don't heal because they don't want to get into that most juicy but also messy state of vulnerability. This is where the real work is, the real transformation going into the politics of intimacy in our own bodies and particularly if we have a partner as well. Very, very deep work. Very scary work for most people, too. They don't want to deal with that. They're good how it is. They're pleasant. Everything's fine. My relationships with women are great. Fine. And that's okay, too. We must respect that. But what I'm reading is that a lot of this transformation, a lot of this re-education, of the goddess, of the divine feminine, is unlearning our own habitual reactions, habitual psychophysical realities in terms of intimacy. Then as a man, how can we help in that sense? Say we have a partner. Listen, listen deeply to the nuances. Observe them, connect with your intuition, and comment on it. Be more vocal, invite transformation, invite the goddess to come in more. You certainly don't have to say, I'm inviting the goddess to come in. But certain questions we can say of what makes you most comfortable? What is what happens in your body when this happens? Questioning like a child. Like a child that hasn't learned anything about intimacy, about the partnership with the beginner's mind come to the goddess with the beginner's mind come to your partner with that childlike inquisitiveness because that's truly how we get back to love like a child thank you and treating the children, the women, everyone, with deep respect as if you were talking to a god or a goddess. Hmm. Can you speak to us about the male that uh, just seems to not have any sexuality at all? Mm. Like maybe asexual? Mm. They're still carrying the divine feminine essence. It's just a choice. A lot of those who are standing in their power that are coming out as asexual or are coming out as polyamorous or are coming out as uh, non-gender binary, trans, uh, whatever it is, it's stepping into more 
of the feminine, which is fluidity. It is not so much identification of this person is this, it's this person is essence, this person is divine essence that does not need to be explained. And this person is with their essence so dearly, which is essence of the goddess, being in their bodies and saying that I'm asexual is reclaiming that. And so it is. I'm asexual. In terms of multidimensional reality, clearly light-seated people are first to awaken to this gender binary of contemporary culture and say, I'm not this or that, but here are my preferences and here is my essence. In terms of evolution, the humanity evolves very fast. Um, survival was essential until recent years. Now, um, now is a strange time when survival, in some senses, is still very important. But in other senses, people can really explore the world freely around them and make choices which were unthinkable before and claim what they are without hiding it. It's all, now is the time of change when it is permissible and it's wonderful. Humanity is giving birth to new genders. In addition to male, female will be more. And again, it's a collective dream and a collective choice what will be developed and how it will for, formalize and for, which form will it, will it take. But it's clearly happening Many people, like dogs, dogs are wolves frozen in a puppy stage. Dogs are undeveloped wolves. It's biology. They are puppies. That's why even adult dogs are called, called puppies. And the same thing happens to humans. Humans are underdeveloped animals in many ways. They are, we are very childish in many ways, big head and not as much of survivalism, not as much of aging. We still in even adv advanced age, we still can learn. So humans are frozen in this learning stage of childhood and adolescence. So this develops even further now, the new children which are being born, new teenagers, new young adults, they're still developing even slower. They're still in that infantile stage, right? So that's what we watch and observe. And it's interesting and it's natural. It is a part of our ascension jump. It's a part of our ascension. We diversify in terms of sexual development as well. Yes. I wanted to bring up the topic of future economy. Future... <laughs> you remember that all talk about communism, capitalism, free enterprise, and all that marketing nonsense. How we will get out of that uh, old um, competition between two systems into something which will work in the future? One of the questions is how do we will, how will we overcome deception? Because deception is the key here in why things in the economy don't work. The money don't represent the labor. They are not proportional to the labor. Their value is very disproportionate one way or another. What will happen to the money? What will happen to the economy? How the humans will overcome the division? Right now, the humans are divided, and most of the humans would help 
inner circle and would fight outer circle, whatever circle it is, country, family, individual, uh, social layer, race, and so on, language, light worker circle, and so on. <laughs> so how will humanity unite, and how will, what are the ways for us to move forward economically and production-wise? What I'm being shown is education of financial literacy at young, young ages. Models for education right now are beginning to introduce how to save money, which in a spending economy is quite evolutionary. Having the heart-centered reality articulated in the heart-centered relationship with money, that's evolution. And what I'm seeing is financial literacy beginning in elementary age, even younger, to be a very intentional incubation for this evolution in the economy. We are speaking to our alien friends and human friends on the other side in the fourth dimension who are helping the humanity from the other side and have certain plans for the contact and helping of solving our problems. And there was a discussion with a human on the other side, human up there on the ships. And he said, yes, the economy will be radically transformed soon. And the date they give, maybe 10 years, about 10 years from now. Um, and I was saying, I was asking, what will the economy look like? What would be the money? Will the money go away? And the answer was, yes, it will go away. And we shouldn't worry about what will happen then, because it will be sold for us. It will be decided for us. It will be given to us. That disturbed me a lot, and that raised lots of questions. Can you reflect on that thing that somebody will give us the answer? What will happen then? I'm getting that individuals will be leading us in answers. There will not be just this one... essence or leader. Hmm. I'm getting as if these leaders of new thought, economics, are like poles to a tent. Some simply residing next to each other, some crossing each other, but they're all holding each other up. But I'm seeing this more as a centralized economy in all areas, centralized more in the family, family economics becoming more transparent, supportive, 
intentional, group, community economics, same thing, city economics, same thing. That's all I'm reading. There is a half baked realization that just can occur to me recently, and I'm contemplating that idea. That in the past, it was laughable how many freebies do Americans get. So many free things. People wouldn't buy anything unless it is advertised as free first. And uh, it was a deception. Obviously, it is a deception in many ways. There is nothing free. You always get something for free, but then you, in exchange, you give away something else. Like Facebook is free, but you give away your communication channels, which then get clogged. So I was critical of that. And now I just thought maybe that is the future. Maybe that free given away, given away for free, donations will be the future way of doing everything. It's unbelievable now, but it is growing, and America is leading in that. Obviously, it is leading. In America, you can sit mm, and eat your lunch in on somebody else's restaurant tables, and people just will overlook that you violate the rules. In Europe, you can't do that. And there is so many more free things, free things. Now we're doing that webinar for free. And uh, many other things, people just do things for free and donate money to where they uh, think are is good. And then there is a lot of that crowdfunding com campaigns which grow now. And maybe it is the way of the future. That's a question. Maybe this is the way of the future, donating things. The economy which is driven by donations. Well, surely the, the spiritual part of donations is tithing. We're getting back to what it means to be spiritual and to not have to sit in a church and tithe we can sit in our homes and tithe. That's liberating. And it also gives us deeper connection that we do desire, particularly in all aspects of our lives, but within our money, our spiritual relationship with money, what it means to thrive also means to give. It's the same thing. Thank you. And wait more questions on any topics. Yeah, I, I was just wanting to, to know if she was familiar with the term uh, Nasara for our government. Nasara, Jasara, and if she had anything to say about that. I did my research on Nisara. It has wonderful ideas on the front few lines, and then it went way, way away from my my vibration. I was not resonating with it. It's something which is not part of my world. It's it creates a lot of vibe and hype. Yeah, it creates a lot of hype. Oh, and I believe a lot of people go after that, but it's just not part of my world. It's uh, th that that vibration is somewhat not in my reality. It's it's ideas are nice when it becomes to details. It just doesn't make a lot, lot of sense. I think it is a reflection. It is a reflection of something deeper un underneath. But I think it is very transformed reflection. It's not. It's not literal. What they say, I don't believe it is literal. That's my conclusion. Go ahead. Uh, 
I'm unfamiliar with that word, but I felt uh, being punched in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. Any more? Our community is blessed. Um, we are protected and guided. People come to us and we clearly see the guidance. In the Sarah movement, there is always a question, who is their real and who is their, what's it word, trolling? And trolling paid, paid trolls as well. I mean, it's always there a question, but uh, something is, is not resonating with me. I just can't follow that. I think some ideas are good, but but the, it's it's not literal what they say. It doesn't look li literal at all. Uh, David Wilcock is closer to me. David Wilcock is the same idea, just darker and closer. I think he is onto something more more real. Although again, we are creating our reality. So I listen to him, but then I shift to much more bright reality than what he speaks. And same thing with. David Icke. May I listen. I read, yes. May I say something on this topic? Thank you. The way I see you, Sarah, is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to see our economic structure as the people we wish it to be. Yes, there have been some promises that have not, in some views, been given or taken all the way to its finality at the moment. However, it is a wonderful view of how our future can be economically that will work for everyone on the planet. I see it. I see the potential. I also feel the probability of it. And it's not a small probability, it's quite huge. But we as humans as part of this human collective have an opportunity to choose it for ourselves. This is something I would like to choose for myself. And I hope that others may choose for themselves something of higher vibration, at least when it comes to economics. Something that is of high vibration for humanity as a whole. We cannot look to the short-term view of how we may perceive things right now. Because if you were looking at the short-term view, you would see things as it is at the moment. However, the way things are at the moment is very temporary. We are in the process of change a change for humanity. This is the wish. This is the goal. And therefore, each of us has the responsibility of choosing what is best for our own highest vibration. We have the power. We have the opportunity. Choose as you wish. I 
Thank you very much. I resonate with you as well. Thank you much. Thank you, sir. Just, just, just like to add here. Um, I put a link to a video in the side chat, and it's about sacred economics, which is actually filmed in Avalon as well. Um, I was present for this presentation. People are interested in the other forms of abundance and exchange and ways we can carry on through the financial turmoils and seas um, and knowing how to navigate them. These are some just a very good watch, so I highly recommend. I'll put the link in YouTube as well. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, the the crisis, suppose there will be a crisis. You can be afraid of it or you can welcome it because the crisis is needed for healing. This economy is just so messed up, it needs some sort of straightening up. And it needs to be straightened up in a smart way, not in a corrupt way. What can you say? Brooke, if you can comment. When I felt from that, this is my higher self talking, the crisis, any of the crisis, I don't use that word very often, but for the sake of identifying right now, economically, the sort of boiling point, spiritually this boiling point, interpersonally, relationship-wise, this boiling point. From economics to going back to Michelle's question about being objectified, these are all on the same level of collective karma, healing, moving forward in our dharma, but going through the motions of karma, because that's essentially what we're doing with having this great faith that we all have here on the call. Faith in each other. Faith in the world. But also faith in forgiveness. And forgiveness of our leaders, Forgiveness of teachers. Forgiveness of those same beings who don't know how to revere the goddess. Forgiveness and blessings for moving forward into our Dharma because we can do deeds we can do deeds of good to assist us in our karma but if we just do them selflessly That's when we get into Dharma. And a way to engage that muscle is in, to engage our spiritual resilience and how we forgive one another respectfully and also humorously. So we have to smile about this too, as Max was saying earlier. That's all I had to say. Economics, interpersonal energetics, the self, all playing together. Any more questions? On this topic or Another one?
Hello, Goddess. This is Wendy again. I would just like to add that all of these wonderful ideas that we've been discussing today, these vibrational ideas, these images of the world that we wish to create, already exist. We, are, we have to remember we are traveling through billions and billions of possible realities every moment. And everything that we've discussed today that we want to see in the world to change already exists. We simply must ask our spirit guides to help us raise our vibrations to become the vibration of the reality that we know already exists that we wish to be a part of. It's already there. We do not need to raise this earth anywhere to raise us to the version of the earth that already exists in the way that we have all discussed today. Every idea, everything you can see, everything you can imagine, you cannot imagine if you're not the vibration of it already. It already exists. We have to remember we're here to raise the vibration of ourselves and everyone else to the vibration of that reality, that parallel existence. It's already there. If everyone understands you're already abundant, everything you need. Abundance is, uh, awareness is becoming, ascension is becoming aware of this, that you are already abundant. You already have everything you need. You have courage. You have strength. You already are those things by virtue of being all that is. If you're part of all that is, you already contain those ideas. They belong to you already. Ask your spirit guides to remind you of that. Remind you of the gods and goddesses that are within you. You are already that. You are not lacking. You're creating the idea of lack, experience of coming out of lack. It's already done. We're already there or we wouldn't be in this room together. It's already there. We're bringing everyone else to their awareness of their own light and that we all have the power to raise ourselves and the vibration that we are to that reality and by just simply being you and being in that vibration, you will all automatically, by law of attraction, rendezvous with those of that like vibration. That's where we will meet real friends. That's where we will meet our gods and goddess friends and our spirit guides and everyone we've been They're in that frequency. That's where we need to go. So thank you, goddess. Thank you, Max. Thank you all for helping everyone understand this is already happening. That's why we're together. Nasa and Shiana. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Awesome, Wendy. Wendy, I sense the green spiral. The shamanic spiral, if you're familiar, circulating, circulating the entire ethereal energy of your body while you were speaking. Thank you for that. Thank you, and I'm thank you for that validation because the entire time I was speaking, I could feel the Shikani Asasani energy within me, and I was I could feel the green contact crystal in my essence while I was speaking. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, that was clearly a Shakani message, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the the idea of Nisara is is from different angle it looks differently, right? So when I was speaking about, I was saying from my perspective, where I am and my vibration, <laughs> I see it this way. So Nisara is a wonderful thing, a wonderful idea that the economy will be transformed in a very organized fashion and there is already a society, hidden society, uh, guided by ascended masters which prepared everything for us and we will be given a new economy just like that, very soon, like this year. And everybody will be equalized and everything will be made in uh, harmonious, harmonious, and fair, right? So, so people who are in we are having a collective dream. So people who are in a different vibe, that's their future. That's true for them. That's true for you. <laughs> that's awesome. That's ex I mean, I do resonate with that, and I have heard from it uh, or about it, but not from David Wilcock, from a completely different source. So that part I was a little confused by. But yeah, I definitely resonate with it. So thank you so much, all of you. All right, let's start wrapping up. Any questions before we, shut, uh, we we wrap up? We will do a series of blessings. Any more topics we need to bring up before we close? Hello, Kayla. Kayla's uh, new to the to the chat room. Is there anything that you'd like to ask? Any questions before we close, Kayla? We're speaking with the goddess energy today. Mm. No, not the moment. Honestly, I think I'm really content right now. Thank you. You're welcome. I would just like to thank the goddess for speaking with us today and sharing her perspective, her as uh, the and the goddess energy. I will second and that. And Say thank you. As well. Mm. For being here. Mm. And I love you all. And thank you for all of your perspective and all of your experiences. Mm. I love you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Namaste. Love you, Sarah. My heart is so filled, so filled with love and joy and gratitude for this now. I cannot express the excitement and, and, and warmth that's exuding from me right now. Thank you so much for being here and part of my journey and co-creating this today with all of us. I agree. As soon as I got on here and no one had said anything and I, my heart just like, poof, like full of warmth and heat and I'm just like, huh, yeah, I'm okay right now. I'm content. I don't, I don't have anything. <laughs> but it's funny because this is such an important topic but it's not really being addressed globally. I mean, it, we talk about it globally but there's not real much action. I mean, like you said, it starts with our children, the education. <sighs> yes, I know we it's need to educate them about, first off, that we have, you know, we are crystalline beings already. We have crystals inside of us. Once awakened, um, we feel things differently. We see things differently um, through the eyes of love. And I've taught my children this, and both of them are beautiful children who exude love to those around them and are patient and kind and um, just wonderful people and hopefully we all can ripple that out and to everyone that we come into contact with um, with giving that to our children our children giving it to others um, ourselves giving it to others uh, there is so much love to give there's there's just never a shortage of that and we never run out of it um, there's always more it's 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 endless 
So, yes, I love every single one of you, and um, I appreciate every one of your opinions, and I appreciate all of your time. Thank you so much. Um, I was driving Uber or riding Uber and talking to different people about, as usual about what I talk about, aliens, <laughs> psychic things, and uh, usually ask people from what country are they from and how is the economy there and uh, what's new there. So apparently in couple years, in the last couple of years, the whole world have been saturated with smartphones. The most poor countries, whatever you imagine, the poorest country you can imagine, people have nothing, but they still have smartphones and they have internet. So that is reconnection on extraordinary level. Now the whole earth is miraculously connected, miraculously connected through internet and people who don't have computers, they have computers in their pockets and they talk to each other all the time. They are connected all the time. That is one thing which is happening. And another thing which is disturbing for many, but I think it's also hope there, is surveillance, global surveillance. It looks like technology is already there when everything can be seen. And when everything can be seen and everything can be traced, the deception has to fade away, has to fade away. It's not obvious, but it is obvious when you think about it. The deception which divides, fragments our mind, global mind, fragments the economy, fragments the countries, the deception has to go away, it has to fade because we become so much more connected through the internet as we are connected right now and in many other ways. So I, so technologically we are shifting, spiritually we are shifting, genetically we are shifting. And again, it is a collective dream which is guided by the planets. There is a universal clock and divine will which is expressed through this universal clock watch mechanism. So we are shifting, we have been dragged into the new reality. The whole dream, the whole collective dream of suffering is now shifting to another dream and uh, it's your decision how to ride these these waves. Sadness is something new to me, sadness from this movie Inside Out and it just it just happened that yes it's true sadness is the tool so you are asking how to detoxify yourself, how to get rid of, how to dump, get rid of of the old programs. Sadness is the tool. Hug it and use it. Use its service to decide what is not needed anymore and let it go. Sadness is a great gift. With that, I thank you all for the co-creation. I thank the spirit for driving this. I thank the spirits who have, who are with us and who are helping wonderfully and gracefully. I thank all the participants and oh, I invite you to smile <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a smile of understanding. Thank you much. Whoever wants to continue, please go ahead. Uh, galactic languages are welcome as well. I'll go ahead. Thank you. Hmm. Enlivened. Enlivened. <laughs> yeah, I can I can give a blessing. Please. As will I. Shili Yakatana E Si Yakato Rolo Tonoa Ini Kiyakatiya 
ili a tonu a taiki, i si e le a tanani ki a ta, ani ri eskalo a tonu a ta, ki a u sululonu a, ki a ta o shoto a. Niko yuko sunu malo kata yuko ashahila asani anati akaha. So yuko asato yuko lea katiyama alora hashi. Iki tiki atoyo hala anono akatoyua. You all gather here in the idea of welcoming a new awareness, a new understanding. New ideas to share with the human collective as you bring forth a new energy. Understanding that the idea begins with you and your heart, with your children. Siato yuko emelea katahina. Malua alura hisasaki, poporaki nana sotoluku akaru. Mau sotoluku asata yakalia tatia tahina. Look to the look to your earth, look to your Gaia for it contains all you will ever need. For all your situations, all your ailments, all your energy, give and take, you breathe in, you breathe out. It contains everything you need. Nikayukurasaniana. Alukuasataya ala anianaka autoyukusha no kuasatiya. Silia kahana, tolu kwe kipuri hinana ki sodua shoya hasana ikaha. Everything is a message for you. Please understand everything is a message. Every sunrise, every sunset, every moment you breathe is a message. Ikiana no ata yakala atura. Shoyo kwa sati ati ikiana toyo kwa shoho anisa. If you could see the timelines that exude from you, you would understand you are a multi-dimensional light being. Isato yuko e hayena aloraha sati. Toya ka yimala atoraha. Sa toya ka te yimala wasa. Tia toya. You are already whole. You are already complete. No koraka shiata halani. Inna tia tolo koka kua yahamala wasa. Sia toya ka shotoya. Simply ask Gaia when you do not feel complete. For her energy. She hmm. anaka tia loasa. Malu kuoso to akashi atohu. She will remind you you are already complete, for she is complete. You are one. We are one. Wakatia shoha to amakasha. Halo aka naya haso. Shura hashaka tiso. Miki asahava. Manu asatia to yakashahi. Walk in, harmony with that, walk in harmony with every decision, for every decision will only lead you to more harmony. Showing you what you do and do not desire. Walk in the way of your desire. You are harmony. We are one. Mahala. Namaste. 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 Namaste.
Namaste. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. I guess, Brooke, it's your turn. Nalamono, mono nano, aishid nano. The portal is open. Manaya, oya no. Latalia, ha. Moinaning Faya Aino O Une The portal is open. This webinar is a portal itself. The love is flooding us all. crystalline stars we are namoni nathayo thank you beloveds omo onyao ai sinamo Lamo, the goddess is with us. The goddess is always with us. Divine love to you. Divine presence for all. Namaste. 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 Blessings. Namaste. Oh. Namaste. Uh, so I have a I have a blessing. It's a blessing and a prayer. Uh, I read it to a, one of the hangout groups previously. I think a couple nights ago, but I feel like it really resides in I and I kind of want I wanted to read it today with. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, it says, um, this is um, speaking about our spirit. All, all have to do with what's, what nature wants and what spirit wants to happen through us. We're articulating and being present and showing up for that next step. Thank you, for we are grateful that we are together to be able to receive a greater wisdom so we can be able to help all living things. Namaste. Thank you. And yeah, next step is one of my favorite principles. Mm -hmm. Namaste. All right. So, uh, Brian, you will see you today is what Tuesday. In three days on Friday, Brian is coming and we go together to Satnam Yoga to the health fair and we'll do interviews there if everything works as planned. And then we publish that. Um, I hope to. Uh, I may. Uh, it, it's it's a magic place, so I hope to 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 make wonderful video there. And on on Saturday we either do Saturday webinar together or do after Saturday webinar together. From my place. When do you come in? I'm actually trying to make arrangements to get there. I wasn't sure if I would be able to come on sa on Friday and spend the day mm -hmm. and then the night on Saturday. I'm trying to make arrangements to do that. I'm not sure if I'll be able to come and spend the night or not. So otherwise, I was hoping to at least come in on Saturday morning. Uh -huh. um, however, I if you could send me the time and the address of the where you'll be on Friday, I would like to maybe try to make it to both of them even if I can't spend the night. Of course. It's Satnam Yoga and I will send you the address. We can start from my place and drive okay. together. 
Oh, okay, great. Okay. But the parking, they, okay, and um, uh, Brooke is traveling to Avalon in UK, and you should pronounce another name, which I said, Avalon at something else at UK, right? Glastonbury, yes. Glastonbury. Yes. And um, we invite a uh, look at the nation. Jim, there will be Brooke, and uh, there is a PayPal button. You can donate there. And even small donation is a great encouragement for the beginner channeler. <laughs> a great encouragement. And uh, all obviously, you can start uh, reserve a channeling session with Brooke over phone or Skype or whatever. And um, again, write to brookealison at gmail.com. And I had sessions, and they were right to the point. They changed my life, actually. I moved forward and sideways and forward and uh, upwards. Yeah, upward <laughs> after these sessions. It was right to the point. OK. Mm. Thank you very much. Anything else we want to announce? No? Mm. The heart vibration is so so flooding all of us so much right now. Thank you for being present with this exchange and thank you for bringing your hearts with you everywhere you are. Really, truly, we are here. Peace is here. Love is here. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for improving the weather. We started with a gray sky and now it's blue and sunny. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. It's been raining here for days, and it is just beautiful, blue skies <laughs> and sunny, so thank you. Same here in Hawaii. It's been raining for three days. <laughs> <laughs> same in Miami. Same in Miami. It was just raining, and now it's blue skies. <laughs> <laughs> All over the world. Woo I have blue skies here, too, but it's like 13 degrees. <laughs> It shifted, shifted. We both, we all shifted, right? <laughs> all right, all right. Stopping the broadcast. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, to the new. Uh, let's uh, looking forward to see you again uh, at the next uh, broadcast. Goodbye. Thanks again, Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Brooke. It's wonderful. <laughs>